Victoria is one of the few places where you can whale watch year round. Today we're with Eagle Wing Tours to see some whales and a whole lot more. First of all, I just want to welcome you guys all to Eagle Wing this morning. My name is Jeff. Uh, today we have two pods of killer whales. We've got um, resident whales over in the San Juan Islands. We're going to start out here at Race Rocks Lighthouse. Uh, so we're going to head southwest first. This lighthouse, Race Rocks Lighthouse, is the second oldest lighthouse on the west coast of Canada. What's happening here, guys, is Pearson College conducts research and the lighthouse keepers have been allowed to stay here as caretakers or custodians on the island and they help out with Pearson College. So what we've got here, guys, these are called harbor seals. The harbor seal weighs about two to three hundred pounds and these seals are extremely lazy. Seventy percent of their life, that's pretty much it right there. <laughs> All right, so for some of you guys, this is your national bird for the United States. Outside of Alaska, we have some of the highest concentrations in North America. There are thousands of mating pairs here in the Northwest. And this will be one of the adults, right? We know this because when they're an adult, they have a white head and tail. The whales are with all these boats. These are a mixture of U.S. and Canadian whale watch boats. Whenever possible as well, we always shut the motor off to minimize noise, right? These killer whales are very acoustic animals. Sound is very important to them. Each whale can be identified quite easily by looking at the white saddle patch. Every saddle patch is slightly different. We also look at the tall dorsal fin because it's different in size, different in shape. Right there, L72 Racer. That's L72 Racer. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Look at this. Thanks for the 65 mile jaunt. All right, no worries. It what was a great. day, what a good morning. It was awesome. A little bit wet, but you know what? It didn't really matter. The whales didn't care. That's true, they're always wet. You guys yeah. are a very eco friendly company. For the last two seasons, we've been offsetting all of our emissions. And we are also members of 1% for the planet as well, which means we take 1% of our gross revenues and we invest it back into the environment, into green areas. Very well done. All you right. guys are about conservation, education, Absolutely. and entertainment. Thanks very much for coming out today. Thank you, Jeff. Good to have you on board. We're very fortunate to be staying at the Fairmont Empress, the lovely and historical hotel and we're in the tea lobby for afternoon tea. How cool is this? The hotel that we're in right now is actually built in 1908, designed by uh, Francis Rattenbury. Oh my God, we pulled up and we're like, this is our hotel? Yes, this looks yeah. like a museum. It, it does, it does, yes, yeah. Turn of the century, so, so very old, very, very rustic, very, very iconic in our city. And I like how you have historical pictures on the wall. It really takes you back. You it really does. feel it, like you're back in the early 1900s. It definitely, definitely. That's, Wide hallways, too. Yes, very big hallways, yes. Tell us about this, because yeah. this is, uh, is kind of unique for me. It is. Our, our afternoon tea service here um, starts with uh, generally uh, fresh berries with some cream as well, and of course our, our tea that's created just for us here at the Fairmont Empress. We start our afternoon tea service with our sandwiches here. We have our uh, sun-dried tomato tapenade, followed by our cucumber and ham sandwiches. Uh, my personal favorite here, the mango and curry chicken. Uh, finished off by our wonderful dessert tower there. Yes, and most people's favorite. Some people start here and work their way down, actually. Is there really any method to it? Can't you just you can, go all over You can over pick the place? wherever you want, exactly. That, that's Beautiful. half the fun of it, yeah. Well, the tea is delicious. It but is. you guys actually take this tea and do something else with it for we a little bit do, later on. We do, we do in our, our Bengal Lounge, formerly known as the Coronation Lounge, or sorry, the Cornet Lounge. Um, in 1954, we do a what we call our 1908 Martini, which is tea-infused vodka. We actually take our vodka, we soak a bunch of tea bags in it for a few days, and actually adds a nice tea flavor to the vodka. Yeah. I love the location of the hotel, and Victoria is Canada's most walkable city, it Canada's is. most fit city. Yeah. How does it get that title? Uh, the, the weather's great here. All year round, you can be biking, walking to work, be doing what you need to do. You to bike to work, right? I do bike to work. The city yes. walks to work, bikes yes. to work, that's yes. why it's such a fit city. It is, yes. What else about Victoria? You're not from this part, so what do you I'm love not. about Victoria? You know, the, the ocean front here, we have a lovely ocean, um, the mountains just up island a little bit it's just it's a, it's a beautiful place we all know 
Canadians love their beer. Tonight in Victoria, we're going on an ale trail. Our first stop, Swan's Brew Pub. Swan's is a, a brew pub downtown Victoria. Uh, this building, beautiful building, it was built in uh, 1913. Uh, this is uh, just three of our beers. Uh, first beer we're gonna have is a, a Tessier's Wit Beer. Uh, that's your last name. That's my last name. Nice. I named this one after myself. Good uh, for you. Favorite type of beer. Cheers. Cheers. That's really nice. Yeah, it's perfect. Like summer, summer beer. Summer beer. Uh, second beer we're gonna try is our extra IPA. Really hoppy, really bitter. I think I like this the best. Sweet, yeah. And I like your summer, and then I like your IPA. Cool. I like them all, but this is my You order. can like them all. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your children, right? Yes. So we found our way to award-winning Canoe Brew Pub. Yogi here is going to tell us about these props on the table that aren't just props. They're not these just props. These are awards, my they man. They are awards. They're really good awards. We actually won um, two silver awards for two out of four of our beers, for our lager, which is our Czech-inspired beer, and our brown ale. Well done. Yeah. Now, your process is really fresh. There aren't yeah, that many really steps. Fresh. Yeah, it's only literally 10 paces from the grain until the beer, which is in there, that goes to your tap, so it's really, really fresh beer. This used to be a coal-powered uh, power plant for Victoria, so this place used to actually power Victoria's city, which is pretty cool. And now beer powers the city. Yeah, exactly. So should yeah. I try one? We're still powering, yeah, definitely. This try is one, one of the award ones, yeah? Cheers, this is our lager, this is our lightest one we have. Love More of our summer drink. What do you think? I like it. Definitely Very light. a good day for it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice summer day. Perfect. Our last stop on the Ale Trail, Canada's oldest licensed brew pub, Spinnakers. Since back in May of 1984, we've been brewing all of our own beer, uh, building you know local community. We've still got people that have been coming in since 84. This year is our Hoptoria. Uh, we brewed this one in commemoration of Victoria's 150 years. Hoptoria says it all, Victoria. You guys are also all about your, your food. And, 100%. And local foods. Definitely. I mean, even our, our cattle. We have a, an arrangement going on with our cattle farmer where we give her all of our, our used barley. She gives it to the cattle, and in return, we get beef. So you Beautiful. Got, you got a burger and beer. You kind of got like a tiny little circle of life going there. Grouse Mountain, also known as the Peak of Vancouver, is located just 20 minutes outside the city. It's open year-round, and it's fun. So our first activity here on Grouse Mountain is zip lining. Now, I've zip lined before, but this is a little bit different setup, Chris. Uh, completely different to a lot of places around the world. It's no, uh, no oven glove or bamboo pole or anything like that. <laughs> Fully automatic system, so. All right, up you come, John. Just watch your head when you stand up on here. It feels good. It's like All sitting right. in a harness and like in a chair. <laughs> Perfect. All right, off we go. Woo! See you down there. Woo! -hoo! <laughs> okay, perfect. Line number two here. Uh, we're starting to get into the good stuff. Okay, this line. It's a lot longer. It's a lot steeper than that first one. We're basically going to end up going a lot faster. <laughs> oh my gosh, how beautiful is this? Woo! <laughs> so I mentioned that we've ziplined before yep. in different places, but the harness is completely different. Yep. The stopping is completely different. And sure taking is. a chair to our next zipline, yep. I love it. This line is about 1,200 feet long. And you, if you're going fast enough, you can reach up to speeds of 80 kilometers an hour down here. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for an exhilarating afternoon. What's up next on our tour of Grouse Mountain? What should we see? Right behind us, the eye of the wind. I think you get some insane 360 degree views of the city and the mountains around us, so I definitely recommend heading up there. Meet Ian. He's going to tell us about this impressive wind turbine. It's not a windmill. What's the difference? Windmill makes bread, wind turbine makes power. 
This makes power, makes power. This is super cool. First one of its kind in the world to actually have both a passenger elevator and a viewing platform on there. So accessible to the public, super easy for anyone to get to from two to 200. These are the coastal mountains here that are actually a subsect. Uh, they're called the North Shore Mountains. Uh, so these big ones that we have in back, it's called a uh, cathedral. And then the one in front of it is uh, Mount Coliseum. And it's as rugged as you get. And then the view of Vancouver. Absolutely gorgeous, eh? Yeah, it's yeah. probably the best view in the city. I don't think you can get anywhere else better. We're staying at the Western Grand, located right in downtown Vancouver. And when you drop into a city and the locals tell you they love the hotel you're staying at, you know it's a pretty special place. The first thing that stands out, it's called the Western Grand. It's shaped like a grand piano. We got a grand so, piano keyboard right here. Yeah. What's up with the music thing? Well, it's just that cooperation kind of between the hotel and really the industry that surrounds us. It's kind of that theater area. We have some theaters close by. So when the hotel was built in 1999, they decided, hey, let's get the building involved, not just the staff and not just kind of the culture. You're right on Robson Street, which is the happening street. You've got restaurants, so many things around that you can walk to. We get comments all the time about, Geez, I came here to Vancouver, didn't know much about your hotel, but came in right from the airport and stayed here, and I stepped out of the hotel and there's shopping and restaurants and theater and Gastown and Yale Town and everything is kind of within that walking distance. So we're pretty proud of that. Now you're from Vancouver. Yes. How Vancouver. has Vancouver changed, especially after the Olympics? Oh, it's been incredible. When I was growing up in Vancouver, downtown wasn't as developed as it was now. So when you went to a restaurant, it was sometimes out of downtown. Now, if you come downtown, you never have to leave. Everything is here. Last night, you guys had a pop-up bar. What's a pop-up bar? Yeah, so we started this this year called the Pop-Up Patio. So we have a little lounge set up, a DJ, drinks, athies. People love it. Love it. Yeah. And your rooms, I mean, the, it's just the Western quality. All rooms are suites, which I love. But what I really love, and something unique, is you have the little kitchenettes in the room. Yeah. So you really can grab the food. There's a grocery store right next door yeah. and really make your own dinner if you want. Yeah, so it works for both. It works for corporate travelers who want to come here, and whether they're staying for one night, or it works for those families who maybe want to have a bowl of cereal for breakfast. They don't feel like they want to go to a restaurant every time. So it really works for everyone who wants to come here. And of course, being a 31-floor hotel, the views from the upper floors are spectacular. Capilano Suspension Bridge Park is Vancouver's most popular and oldest tourist attraction. The bridge itself was built in 1889 and is 450 feet across and 230 feet above the raging Capilano River. Its newest addition, Cliff Walk, showcases the bounty of the temperate rainforest surrounding and it's a thrilling way to experience Vancouver's beautiful natural surroundings. With over 12 million visitors a year, Granville Island is a bustling part of Vancouver. Today we meet up with Edible Canada for a culinary tour. This is a very cool part of Vancouver right now. Tell us about Granville Island. Very nice. Gra well, Granville Island has a lot of history. All of the tin buildings that you see here, uh, you know, are original buildings. This used to be a real worker's place, very industrial. So they opened up the market in 1979 and invited artisans to come in with their studios and local vendors to open up shop. And it was an instant success. Let's explore. Yeah, absolutely. So, Stop Uno. This is the stock market. So here they actually open before the market opens at 8 a.m. and they start serving breakfast. So they serve oatmeal sometimes with a nice fruit sauce. That is so good. So South China Seas, great place to get those special ingredients for when you're cooking and you can't find it anywhere else. Unique. You come here, everybody knows about South China Seas. And this is sea asparagus. So this is salty. We had this last night at Kitsilano Kitchen. Oh, you did? Chef Brian comes down here every day and buys all his ingredients fresh and prepares his menu daily. That's fabulous. And we had this on our one of our appetizers. So I noticed that you started with the bag and now I have it. Why am I carrying the bag now? That's because you're misbehaving and I want you to have the full experience on the tour. Just because I was misbehaving. <laughs> <laughs> so next up is Benton Brothers Spine Cheese. 
I love this stuff because there's a huge story. Andrew and his brother Jonah actually own this cheese company. And they've got three locations, but they're engineers. And they never really were born into this. They decided they didn't want to be engineers anymore, got into the cheese business. And what they specialize in is small production cheeses. We're going to go to Petit Ami next for some coffee samples. Okay, it's obviously very popular. It is. And There's it's a line. It's a hidden secret. So once people come on the tour or they come through Granville Island on their own, they discover the coffee, then they keep coming back. So we're here at Lee's Donuts, and this is one of the original vendors in the market when it opened in 1979. They're doing very simple donuts, very simple recipes. They haven't changed anything, and they make it with a lot of love and care. All right, so we're here at Edible Canada to do our last tasting of the tour. So birch syrup is kind of the new niche product out of Canada. You know, some people get different things. I taste birch. <laughs> really? Wow, know, what a great palette. <laughs> this is a staple in my fridge. This is Turkish fig and walnut wine uh, spread, so it's like a jam. We're sort of taking you on a little trip through the Vancouver food scene and what's local and what's Canadian and what's really good. You did a very nice job today. Why, thank you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. That makes me feel happy. It's you. That makes me feel right. It's you. That makes me feel crazy. It's you. It's you. It's you. Water Sun is the official sound of Vancouver tourism, which is pretty darn cool, guys. We had a song in a radio contest, and uh, through one of the judges in that contest is a music supervisor in Vancouver, and she was contracted to find some music for that and heard the song and thought it would be perfect for it. Tours in Vancouver said, you guys have to check out this video. Your video is amazing. And they did it for you guys, right? They loved your song so much, they said, we want to make this video. Being the musicians we were, we didn't have any funding to do so. Of course. So we're just trying to like scrape together a thousand bucks to get our buddy to make a video. And all of a sudden we get called from uh, Vancouver Tourism and they want to put on a huge you know, production for us. So cool. For, uh, for nothing. So that was, obviously it was a, a dream come true. Hey, it's you that is always up on my mind. I think I gotta be taken, I gotta be taken up all the time. Yeah, that's right. You know what makes me feel right, what makes me feel nice. You make me feel twice. Yo, sure. I wanna get close to just like all your clothes get to do all over you. Who is it, child, me young bum? But I wanna make them sing, mama sing that to you. But I wanna make them feel happy. It's you that makes me feel right. It's you. That makes me feel crazy. It's you, it's you, it's you. Oh, yeah, it's you, it's you, it's you. Your music is described as funky, soulful beach music. So how appropriate that we're out on a gorgeous night in Vancouver on the beach. Does it get any better than this? This is this is why you live in Vancouver. This is this is the time of season, and that's why you come down here. So the song is called "It's You, Vancouver," and every time I hear it, I like it more. What I also like about you guys is that your music and your style is upbeat and positive, which is what Next Stop is. We're also about having fun and keeping it positive, so you guys fit in perfectly. <laughs>